Hey everybody, back with another video. I wasn't actually planning on doing this one, like I normally say, um, but I started doing some signature analysis and started a different video um, with messing with the Williams board. And I wanted to, um, I've had this Kurtz Cash Signature 2 analyzer that I've been using, but I had picked up one of these HP, uh, let's see if you can see that, 5005As. It's a signature analyzer and a multimeter, and I hadn't even powered it on yet, and it has some um, issues, so I figured I would quickly um, maybe do a video and see if I can fix it. Um, so let's go ahead and power it on. When you first power it on these 5005s, all the lights should come on. So like the clock lights, start, stop, um, what is that, qualitative or something. Um, all of these TTL threshold lights, CMOS, CMOS, ECL, all of these should light up. And then the gate and unstable light should flash. And then we might see something on the LEDs. And then after it powers up, you should get TTL, your three TTL lights lit up. And your clock, start, stop, all on the rising edge should be um, lit up as well. So, and I think there, even these lights should light up. So let's see that. See, there we go. So that's kind of what happened. Everything lit up, and then it says error 10, and then it's these dashed lines, that's normal. But we saw that it said error 10, and then we saw, you know, this is what it should look like if it's ready to go. So the TTL light should be on, and then our, our rising edge, clock, start, and stop. If you press these buttons, obviously you'll change it to the uh, falling falling edge for start and stop and every time you press it um, it'll, it'll go back to the way it was so I haven't even really messed with this at all sorry for that glare there um, but let's power it off really quick one more time and we're going to power it on you'll see all the lights go on and then um, everything's lit up you'll see gate and unstable flash we get the error code and then it looks to be normal after that. All right, so we're gonna look up what error 10 is and then go through some basic troubleshooting here in a second. All right, hopefully, yeah, you can see this. So I looked up the error message in the manual here and you can see hopefully error 10 says, um, digital voltmeter 10 volt calibration measurement is less than 9.3 volts on 25 volt range. Um, so it's basically, it looks like the deep digital voltmeter aspect of the tool needs to be um, calibrated and that was the issue. Now, if I scroll up, if I scroll up here, it also has a quick operation test. It says, um, what we want to do, quick operation test verifies other circuits not checked in the power up self check. Um, press the ohms button, verify that the display reads open. Okay, hopefully, you guys can see this real quick. I'm not printing this out. Then it says connect the data probe tip to the timing pod, start, stop, green, stop, qualitative, red. Um, no, it says start, ST, SP, whatever that is. Okay, so start and stop, basically, um, and clock. And then make sure that they read 100,000 uh, 100, ohms for each reading. Um, and then make sure that the black um, probe or black lead uh, reads zero ohms. So let's go back and so do that real quick. Here's our probe tip. And we'll make sure, let's actually, first thing we're going to do is hit ohms. Oh, we got an Air 14. That doesn't. <laughs> that that sounds bad. So I don't have errors on signature analysis, but I have errors on the kilo ohms here. All right. So let me let me see what Air 14 is. All right. It says um, Air 14 is ohms two volt calibration less than 1.9 volts. So. This seems to be a calibration issue, um, which hopefully it, I'll be able to do in this video here soon. So. All right, it won't even let me make a measurement there. So that's that's bad news, right? And just so you know, like on eBay, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, is they, they sold this at um, as is for parts, but they did power it on 
and didn't mention that there was any errors, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's kind of BS, right? That they power it on, you see that error 10 right away. They don't mention it in the eBay ad, even though they got pictures of it being powered on. Um, and then also, why wouldn't you press some different buttons? I mean, that's that's kind of just BS, so. All right. All right, I've been, I've been messing around and actually reading the manual. Imagine that, reading the manual. Actually, it has this, um, in the manual, it has this performance test. Um, so you can re re um, record your, God, I can't talk. You get, so you can record your um, tests, and there's some performance test measurements too, like actually um, you know, doing the resistance test with different, uh, resist, um, resistors, ohm values of resistors and stuff, um, different DC voltage tests, um, peak performance and all that stuff. So anyway, what I figured we do is we already know we went through the self test, self check, and hopefully that music's not too loud, but we went through the self check. We got error 10. That is some type of, um, digital voltmeter reference thing. And then frequency counter test, if we do we do that, we don't get an error. And so what I figured I'd do is I actually have it hooked up to a board here with the no-op adapter. And we're just going to probe our clock. This should be a um, 1 megahertz clock. And you can see that's kilohertz, so 999.98 kilohertz, which is basically almost 1 meg. And you see the um, the gate LED flashing like about once every second, I think. One one thousand. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Three one. Yeah. So yeah, that's the gate should be flashing about once every second. So that works. The the total totalize or whatever the heck that is, I don't actually know when when would you do, use this? I'm not sure. Um, okay, this this is when if I place my probe on a on like um, one of the address lines it's going to tell you how many how many transitions I guess um, you know from high to low um, based off of when the, where the start and stop is I haven't done all the all this reading and stuff but you can see that's four that's a, that's like address line 13 and I'm I'm doing a no operation adapter so you have two two pulses I guess in, in between the start and stop time and if I go to address 15 you have one so it should increment so if I'm because I'm running a no operation adapter or no operation instruction set this would be one this would be two this would be four and it's following and if I come over here to the other address line right there you got eight sixteen and I'm just screwing around. This isn't the right way to test it, but you can see it is actually working as expected. I'm just going up the address lines. So like address line, whoops, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192 is that it nope 16384 I think that's it right nope 32768 that must be the first address line yeah so the first address line so there's 32768 um, pulses when running the no operation instruction set I thought that was kind of interesting and it shows that my total total eyes or whatever you want to call that um, works we go to milliseconds you actually don't use the data probe for this it's just basically counting how far how long between the based off of where the start and stop is how long does it take you to get there I guess that so that's 131 milliseconds I was thinking maybe I should do there we go so between between start and stop it's uh, 65 milliseconds. I don't know. I'm not fully understanding, or I don't have a reason to actually use this right now. But I guess it's measuring how long, based off of where your start pulse is and where your start 
probe is and where your stop probe is, probe is, it's going to measure how long it takes the signal to get there. So if it was transitioning on the high and then transitioning on the low for stop, we're on the same same damn thing because I have start and stop on the same line right there. But I could screw around with that a little bit more, but I'm not going to. All right, and then we got air 14. So we got frequency counter, I think is good. The totalizing counter test, I think is good. Time interval test, I don't know. I'd have to measure it. There's, there's some performance measurements you can do, but I'm, I don't have all the equipment to, to do all that. Then we have the ohm meter test. We got an air voltmeter test. We get an air, right? Um, normal mode test is for signature analysis. And now in the signature analysis here, what we're doing is I'm just screwing around here. This this is not this is not qualitative. This is qualifying signal, I guess. Um, it's like an additional extra step you can do for signature signature analysis based off of anyway I'm not going to explain it right now because I don't really understand it but every time you press this data you can change this is, means that there's um, the TTL logic level for high is 2 volts and for low it's 0.8 volts and if I click it again I'm going to go down to ECL and ECL uh, would be negative negative 1 Point one zero for high and negative one point five for low. That's interesting. And then CMOS would be three point five for high and three one point five for low. And you can adjust this here if you press data and then adjust it. You can see that it goes uncalibrated. So it's saying that this data level is not to the factory original basically. So I need to come back down. This is what what it's calibrated as, or what it stand what standard. Then you press it again, and it'll go back up to the TTL. So we're we're gonna leave all of these at TTL, and you can adjust these uh, the clock level thresholds, what's high, what's low, um, based off of ECL or CMOS or TTL, and configure the logic voltages um, for the transition there as well. So there's definitely you know a lot more to it than the the K&K &K, but I don't know if I'll ever need that K&K &K works fine for me but I just thought this would be interesting um, to kind of experiment and learn with all right and then um, we want our stop and start yeah I have my clock on the falling edge um, and rising edge for start and stop we're on normal and what we should get on our 5 volt signature is 003 and that's what it shows over here, actually, if you guys can see that. Um, 003 is the VCC voltage for 68,000. And that, that looks right to me. The other thing is I can check from a signature standpoint. I'm just checking address 13. And I'm getting 4868. And that's what my K, K and K says I should get for address 13, 4868. As you can see right there, address line 13. So that looks normal to me. Um, I already probed a whole bunch of these and it's getting good signatures. So the signature part of this 5005 is definitely working correctly. Um, the next thing we can do is delta voltage. But I get an error on that. And what that means is I think you... Uh, you measure a voltage at one location and then you can measure it at another location and it will tell you what the voltage difference is. And then you can do a peak voltage. And this is how I know our voltage is reference is off because if I measure my 5 volts, it's saying the peak voltage is 5.5 volts. Well, hopefully it's staying. Is it staying on the thing? Should be somewhat stable. <laughs> Yeah, 5.5 volts, and that's about 0.5 volts off um, as you, from what it's supposed to be. And if I go to ground, what's it say for ground? 
yeah, it's saying I have 0.5 volts on ground when that should be like zero volts. So I know, um, and then we can do the negative, negative voltage too. If I measure a, an address line like this, I'm just going to be on an address line, it says that the um, peak negative voltage on that address line is 0 0.75, 0 0.85. So we know that's probably not accurate, but it is actually recording and working correctly. And on the 5 volts, peak is 5 volts, but it's probably a half volt less than that. It's probably like more like 4.5. So this is just measuring voltage peak and vo uh, the um, and voltage peak and volt and negative voltage peak, I guess, or whatever at the at the valley or whatever. And this is at the. All right, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm just uh, filming some of the stuff I'm playing around with as I go through it, and I think I'm going to crack this open now and I'll try to try to fix the voltage. <laughs> 